Have you been using Maya for years and need to make the switch to Blender? Or have you been using Blender and need to make the switch to Maya? I've documented the entire process with the end goal being this series to help anybody jump between either software. So with that, let's jump right into it. Okay, so here we are in Maya. And the way that I'm gonna format this video is I'll start in Maya, go over a few things and then switch to Blender so you can easily see how these skills and workflows are transferable between the software. I go through this on a regular and daily basis. I'm working in Maya all day at the studio. And then in the evenings, if I'm doing freelance, I'm using Blender. And then I also teach at universities where I'm teaching how to use Maya and we're slowly starting to use Blender there as well. Let me know if this format works. Is it easy to follow if you're using either software? If not, let me know down below. So here we are in Maya and you can see that we are in the workspace general at the top right. And we are using the modeling tab over here as well. I also have the shelves here. So you can see at the top, we have different types of shelves and I'll just stick to poly modeling for the purposes of this demo. Then we have our time slider at the bottom. And then on the right here, we have kind of channel box and attribute editors. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that real quick. To create an object, you can go to your shelf, simply hit the cube and it'll create a cube. So I'll just hit the delete key to delete that. Or you can hold shift right click and create a cube here. To compare that with Blender, if I alt tab into Blender, here is a brand new default scene that always starts you with a camera, cube, and light. As you can see, it has similar workspaces here at the top. So we have layout, which just contains most of the tools that you would need. There are modeling specific, sculpting, UV editing, texture paints, shading, so on and so forth. Again, at the top, you can switch to pretty equivalent workspaces at the top. Now, the cube is already here, but if I delete this cube with just selecting with left mouse button and deleting, I can create any object with Shift A, and then you get your add or creation window. This allows you to create any type of mesh, curve, surface, metal ball, so on and so forth including lights. It's basically how you create and add anything in Blender. So if I just recreate the cube here, we're back to kind of an equivalent way, an equivalent setup between Maya and Blender. Now in Maya, you have the channel box editor. This is essentially a high level view of your positions and includes your history here, which you'll see in this view here. And then you have your display layers. If I hit control A, this opens up my attribute editor. Your attribute editor contains the mesh information and it contains the polycube history. So if I wanted to actually change the size and position or the specifications of this polycube, I can do that with height, width, and depth here in the attribute editor, as well as make material edits here. Inside of Blender, the way that it works is you can see that I've created a cube and at the bottom left, I have the options to change the positions and the size of this cube. So I can actually set this cube maybe to five meters here and it makes it a five meter cube. Now, the second you click off, here's one of the big differences. The second you click off, you no longer have that history to modify the mesh. Now, for example, I'll delete this, hit shift A and I'll create a cylinder here. And here I can actually change the vertices and I'll enable kind of wireframe on shaded so we can actually see what we're doing. So if I go and enable wireframe here at with viewport overlays, now you can see we can change that. Now what happens is, is once you create it and click off, you're kind of done, right? So even in this side here, this panel here where we have location X, Y, and Z, there is no history that we can change the subdivision for this cylinder. So once you start making it, you want to make sure to edit it at that time. Now, if I delete that, hit shift A, recreate a cylinder here under mesh, you can see that it's using the last, it's using the last information that I used to enter to create the cylinder. Now, one thing you can do is if you click off and I select the cylinder again, you can hit F9, which allows you to use the last, which brings back kind of the last known function that you've entered. Here I can change it, but the second like you click off of it and let's say now you create a cube and I move that and I try to hit F9, it's going to use the move tool. So you have essentially one function to for, for that to change. So that's one of those things just to keep in mind as you're working between Blender and Maya is Maya, I can switch back and I can actually 
add in any of that detail here. So if I delete this and I create a new cylinder here with the shell and go to my channel box, I can change that here with the subdivision axis at any given time. So if I create a cube and move this object, now you can see we have this, okay? And then I go back to the cylinder, you can see I still have the history. So it maintains the history there, which is great. Now, one of the big differences between Blender and Maya is the navigation. You'll see that I'm orbiting around in Maya. So in Maya, for navigation, you hold Alt left mouse button as you rotate around. This lets you orbit the camera around the object. You can hold Alt right mouse button to zoom in, or you can use the scroll wheel to scroll in and out. So again, that's left mouse button to orbit around, Alt right mouse button to zoom in, and then to pan, you hold Alt middle mouse. And that gives you all of the key navigations that you need to move around. So as you see me doing this, these are the key tools that I'm using to orbit and move around. If I switch back to Blender, it is different, okay? Now, I am fully well aware you can switch Blender over to industry compatible, which will allow you to use the Alt, left mouse button, middle mouse button, right mouse button, but if you switch to that, it also switches all the hotkeys, and if you're trying to follow along, and learn Blender with a tutorials online, you're gonna have a hard time because almost no tutorials use industry compatible. I recommend just brute through it, maybe change the alt, the orbit navigation and whatnot if, if that really bothers you. But once you make the adjustments, you'll be fine. Because inside of Blender, in order to orbit around, you hold middle mouse button to orbit the camera around. And then if you want to zoom in, right, you hold control shift middle mouse button here. Okay, now to pan, you hold shift and middle mouse button to pan, just like this. So you kind of get used to just free hand moving around. And if I want to zoom in, you can hit period on the numpad. Compare that to Maya, you would hit F to frame. It's called just frame all. And there you go. So as you're moving around, that's moving the camera around, that's a key navigation. Now, as you can see, I have my translation tool here, which is my move tool. To use your move tool, to use your move tool, you want to use W to move. So you can see I can start to move this around inside of Maya. To rotate, I will use E. So now I got my rotate tool. And then to scale, it's R. Now that's based off QWERTY key. So that's the Q, W, E, R, T. And then to select, you just go back to Q and you're good to go. The gizmo, these are your traditional gizmos. So if I want to move this in 3D space or in all three axes, I can grab the middle. If I want to only move this in the Z and Y, you can grab the red icon that allows you to not move it in the X axis, okay? You can also move X, Y, and Z here in the channel box. So you can just type in uh, values there. If we contrast that here with Blender, the way that this works is you want to use, for move, you want to use G. So G for grab, and now you can see I'm moving. To rotate, it's R. So now it's kind of the opposite, where scale is R, but in Blender, R is rotate. And then to change the scale, you have S for size or scale. So we can change that here. Now, one thing that's pretty nice is if I just kind of reset all of these transforms here. Now, actually to do that, this is a good point. So you can see I have my channel box here inside of Maya. And then over here, I have my object properties. You can change your transforms here, but let's say you're in your modifiers tab and you don't want to switch. Well, you can simply hit N. This is kind of like a quick channel box inside of Blender. So I can select all of these, put this back to zero here. I'm just left mouse button dragging there. Okay, so if I want to, again, move this, you'll see that I can move. And if I want to move in a specific axis, you start to use X, Y, and Z on the keyboard. So if I press X, you can see it's gonna move it along the red line. If I press Y, 
I can move it along the y-axis. And z, I can move it along the z-axis, which is great. Okay, so that gives me kind of how to, how to move that. But what if I want to move this in kind of the two axes, right? Because like in Maya, it was always easy for me to just head in here and use Y and Z and kind of position that here. Well, if I want to use this, I would select this and press G and then Shift Y. Okay, so see, so you can see how I'm moving it only in the X and Z. Now, one thing you'll probably notice is that Z is up inside of Blender which uses a right-hand coordinate system. So Z, Y, and X being X forward. In Maya, it's slightly different. The gizmo's down here and also uses a right-hand coordinate system with the main difference being that Z is forward and Y is up. So that's why I had to use a different axes to move these. But again, to recap, if I wanted to move these now, let's say in the Z and the Y and not in the X, I press G, then Shift X, and then there you go. Now, of course, in Blender 4 and previous other versions of Blender, if you hit Shift Spacebar, you get this kind of mini marking menu where you can actually go into a gizmo mode. And this is great, especially when you're making that transition, because this took me a while to get really used to just using Blender and the way that it con you can transform objects. So I relied heavily and still do, I still use this all the time, is I'll just shift spacebar and then go back to the uh, just the select here. You can, of course, select here on the left panel uh, at any given time, just like once you switch inside, like if I go to modeling standard, now I can switch this workspace to modeling standard and you can see you also have your select, your move tool, your rotate, but definitely get used to using the hotkey. Now, one of the last things I want to cover is as you're in here, the big thing is component modes, right? In Maya, at any given time, you hold right click and then you can enter your multi-component mode or your component mode, right? Now, if you see my workspace is modeling standard and then I have modeling toolkit, you can also switch them up here. So this is great as I'm moving around and let's say I wanna select an edge, then I hold right click, switch to edge mode, and then I can start selecting edges. I hold right click, face mode, great. In Blender, you need to do what's called entering edit mode before you can manipulate any of the components here. Now in order to do that, you can jump over to the modeling tab or the modeling workspace, and that will automatically put you in edit mode. Now it doesn't really say, but now we can see the vertices, right? So just to make sure, if I want to enter edit mode, you just simply hit tab. So hitting tab, now I can start selecting vertices here and with one, or I can go into edge mode with two. So this is kind of how I switch. And then three, I can start selecting faces. Now, one thing you'll notice is as I'm selecting faces in Blender, it does not let you select back faces if you are in what's called solid mode. In Maya, you absolutely can select faces regardless, right? So do keep that in mind, especially that was one thing that kind of threw me off as I was going through between Maya and Blender. So going back to Blender, if you wanna select through the object, then you can go into wireframe mode. So you can use Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode, actually. I prefer X-ray mode. And then you can go back and switch your selections, which makes sense. Took me a little bit of getting used to, but it's completely fine. Okay, so this is where I wanted to stop. I wanted to stop right here, kind of right where we enter edit mode. And then the next video, we're gonna jump right into edit mode and all of the key functions and modeling tools and how to actually manipulate all the components. Also, if you haven't checked it out, be sure to look at my Patreon where I have a bunch of different tiers in here, including a mentorship tier and you get access to all of my free source files along with the Patreon as, and as well as some custom tutorials that I'll be posting pretty soon. So to support the channel, be sure to check that out and I'll see you in the next video.